Okay, thank you. Uh, let me say thanks for the invitation uh, to come here and speak to you today. And also, I hope you had a good coffee break with some, <laughs> some nice refreshments as well. So, I had at least, so thanks. Um, today, I will talk a little bit about ethics in the treatment of fiscal data. Um, I think that ethics is an area that will increase more and more in, it, in, in importance especially when we come into the area of using algorithms and advanced analytics in more and more of our different applications and communications together with uh, taxpayers, citizens, and then businesses. <clears throat> uh, I'll talk a little bit about how we use fiscal data in general, uh, how we in Swedish tax has been using algorithms as a part of our treatment and, and way of work. Uh, I will also talk a little bit about the framework for different applications within this area and the importance of how we do things. How we do things matters. It matters a lot. And I will also end by talking a little bit about what areas can we control and what can we not control? How do we use information? In what way? What kind of information do we use? And what kind of applications do we want to use advanced analytics in? Um, so, starting out, uh, Swedish tax management manages all civil registration of private individuals we collect taxes such as personal income tax, VAT, uh, and the mission of the Swedish tax is to safeguard the financing of the public sector and to contribute to a well-functioning society uh, for citizens, uh, industry, and to, to counteract criminal or fraudulent activities. Um, and in this sentence, I would also like to say thank you to, to Lotta for her excellent presentation earlier. Uh, it's, it's very interesting to have an outstander coming in, observing our activities and our way of working. It will always contribute to our knowledge as well as the knowledge of others. Um, and Lotta also presented the vision of the Swedish tax agency which is a society where everyone is willing to pay their fair share. And we want to contribute to, to nurturing this work and nurturing the willingness to, to comply. And we want to earn the trust of our citizens and we work to ensure that everyone pays the correct amount of tax and, and we try to make things smoother for the ones who are willing to comply, and we try to, in a systematic way, um, stop or, or interfere with fraud. <coughs> in this line of work, we analyze vast amounts of data, fiscal data. Um, we also process addresses, ownerships of businesses, uh, real estate vehicles, imports, exports, uh, taxi licenses, <coughs> licenses to sell alcoholic beverages, etc., etc. et cetera. So we have vast amount of information coming into Swedish tax. And ethics is and will become more and more important as we move into a world with uh, advanced analytics, AI, all of the new nice buzzwords. <coughs> Not working? Ah, you can change. Oh, okay. okay. Thanks. So can I do ask me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. 
generally speaking, uh, Swedish tax uses algorithms in many of our day-to-day -day tasks as routine processes, the way we work. But in recent years, as you all know, uh, the algorithm uh, or the conception of algorithm has been more and more connected with advanced analytics, big data, etc. Uh, and in the latter meaning, Swedish tax is, is fairly new in this area. We have a, some experience, and, and we have been working with advanced analytics within the risk management and the selection of taxpayers area. We have been working around uh, since, since uh, 2007, 2008, we started working with this. Uh, prior to that, we have been working with other methods trying to achieve more or less the same thing. Um, so in, in, in the recent years, uh, we have been working with algorithms to, to better understand how our taxpayers uh, move around on our web page, trying to analyze click patterns, trying to, to give enhance uh, taxpayer services through our web page and information or spreading of information. Uh, and a few years back, we had a pilot as well trying to... to uh, uh, build a frequently asked questions uh, robot, trying to answer simple questions from taxpayers, so having a communi communication through AI and, and advanced analytics. And the most recent development, we have tried to, uh, tried to build a model that will uh, classify our incoming emails, questions and, and uh, mostly questions from our taxpayers. So we want to, to classify them in order to, to reply to the questions in a, in a timely manner. If you are a taxpayer, a business or a citizen today, and you want to ask Swedish tax something, uh, you will go into our web, web <laughs> sorry, you will go into our web page, and there you will have a form that will consist of, of first one question if you are a company, or an individual or private person. And that question is, is answerable to most of all or of all, most of all, or all, all of our taxpayers, sorry. Uh, but then after you answer, if you're a private person or a company, you will be presented with around 20 different possible choices. And you need to understand how did Swedish tax think when we set up these different categories. Is this a question that you are asking about uh, estate tax? Is it about selling or private property? Is it about VAT, etc.? So you have to know and have to uh, have a quite good understanding of, of what the tax question actually is. What we are trying to do now is instead of letting our taxpayers choose the right category, which they do at least correctly in 50% of the cases. They actually, I think that's actually quite good. So in 50% of the cases, they actually choose the right category. But the other 50%, we will take more time in answering because we have to reclassify them, guiding or steering them into the right category to our auditors in order to answer the questions. But what we are trying to do now is build a, a text analytic algorithm that will automatically categorize by the content of the email. So this will enhance taxpayer service. We can actually answer the questions faster and they will be more correctly categorized. And we also will take a lot of the frustration that we have from, from taxpayers today that do not know what category they have to choose. And there is no other category in the form today. So they have to choose something. And after pondering about five or ten minutes, you tend to choose, well, whatever. <laughs> so that is, that is a bit of what we are doing currently with advanced analytics and, and algorithms. And the model of, of classification of emails, we, we built that on, on about 600,000 historical emails from, from one or two years past where we analyzed.
three important questions that we try to ask ourselves in all of our applications, not only within advanced analytics, but in all cases of, of treatments or different treatments, be it audit campaigns, be it information campaigns, etc. Um, do we have the ability, do we have the technical aspects in place? Do we have the knowledge, the competence in Swedish tax to do this task and to do this application? As the development is, is racing forward within this area with advanced analytics, I think that the boundaries is constantly being pushed forward. What we could not do five years ago, we can do easily today. What we can't do this year will be made possible next year or the year after that. Uh, challenges that we face are, are uh, I think, similar to, to other tax administrations as well in the area of, of natural language processing and, and other things, trying to, to enhance communication and, and feedback to, to taxpayers. Um, the next one is about legality. Um, is the intended application within the legal framework of Swedish tax? The main law that regulates this uh, is about what information we can use, how, what purpose can we use this information for. And it's collected within the Swedish tax database law. So we have a l database law that regulates what contents, what kind of information can we use, and, and also the purposes, how can we use this information. Um, and mainly, the framework is that all of the information that we collect is information that is required to fulfill our mission to establish correct taxation, to establish a correct uh, people registration, etc. So it's connected to our mission, and we are not allowed to um, gather information that is not connected to our mission. Uh, I remember a few years back we had a, a long or short discussion with our legal department. Um, we wanted to, to um, gather information from the Swedish transport uh, agency and we wanted to bring in information so that we could correctly tax uh, the, the benefits of, of free cars or company cars. So we wanted uh, a part of the, the vehicle registration. And most of the information was, was accessible to us and we could gather that information because it, it was, uh, it was uh, a part of the law or it was allowed uh, in, in order to this law. But the one information that we could not use was the color of the car. So that was forbidden for us. And, of course, you could ask yourself, is, is, is the color of the car affecting uh, if you pay more or less tax? Probably not. So that was very hard to, to argue for. We had some idea and some notion, well, if, if you are driving a red car, if you are driving an expensive car, is that more or less... Does that affect your risk behavior or your risk-taking person or not? It's a long stretch, but, but <laughs> in the end we chose not to, to incorporate that information to, to our models and, and our uh, work within risk management. The last, but maybe not the least, question is the question of ethics. Is this the right thing to do? How will this application affect our confidence from taxpayers and the trust from public, from citizens and, and businesses? And we have an, we have an, uh, an uh, ambition to, to be an effective tax agency. But we, we have to keep in mind always that we have to do things in the right way, in the right manner not to lose sight, just to, to, to be as efficient as possible. Because then we will tend to lose the ethical questions and, and the question of should we really be doing this and what are we actually doing. 
I will go into a bit more of our examples a bit later. As I said, I think the, the ethical question is an important one, and would il it will increase uh, moving into the AI and the advanced analytics area because things will tend to go faster and faster. The speed will increase. The speed of which we are making decisions, making um, investigations, uh, uh, research, etc. Everything will speed up the... the, the uh, need of knowledge is, is ever growing. Um, I think that uh, at, at least Lotta is aware, but a few years ago, uh, the Swedish police in, in the southern part of Sweden uh, kept a register of Romani people living in and around that area. And this was quite a big debate in Sweden and I would say that most Swedish people would agree that this was an error because we kept a register uh, due to ethnicity <laughs> that's a hard word ethnicity uh, that was the base of the register so based that they were a part of the Romani people that was the base of that register the purpose as to why the Swedish police started that register was probably a good one because they wanted to identify fraud, they wanted to, to maybe prevent it from happening, etc. So it had a good purpose for, for it. But when they started and the base of that register was uh, error and they failed to see it from the citizen perspective. Um, and this issue also affected relations and trust from the citizens and the public towards police and police enforcement. And in hindsight, I would say that, of course, they should have avoided it. And I think more or less all policemen are, are aware that they should have avoided the register all through. But at the time of the discovery, I don't think there were much or little reflection whether this was the right thing to do or not. In this specific case, they were even outside the legal framework. But even if they had been inside the legal framework, would it have been the right thing to do? In dealing with ethics within Swedish tax, one of the foundations that we are trying to, to uh, address is to uh, is to, to separate person from action. These are two different things and this, this is a, quite a, a big piece in, in the foundation of, of ethics as well. If Swedish tax were to devise an algorithm or a model that would calculate the probability of VAT reimbursement fraud, the trigger or the starting point of that risk evaluation being the VAT claim or the VAT reimbursement claim, or alternatively, we will build a model that will weigh the risk of the taxpayer and base on that individual risk we would assess all VAT reimbursement claims. The result from these two cases would actually be quite similar. The end result being a list of cases for audit or investigation or information, some sort of action that the Swedish tax wants to do with these claims and, and with a high risk of fraud. But how we do things matters. If we evaluate individuals by risk or if we evaluate claims or non-claims, actions or non-actions, it will lead to two very different paths of, of thinking or paths of thought. If we take, for instance, that 
we are selecting individuals, we are risk evaluating individuals, taxpayers, citizens, businesses, etc. It, it really doesn't matter. But if we were to present that information, maybe if we take an, an easy example, we want to present this information to all of our auditors in Swedish tax. And we say that we will show you a, a traffic light. We'll show you a green light, a yellow light, or a red light, depending on the risk of that individual being a good or bad taxpayer. Are we going to start treating taxpayers differently according to risk? Will a, will a green light taxpayer be a better citizen, a better taxpayer? Should he or she be less serviced or, or more serviced? Where does this thinking or this line of thought lead us? If we do not separate action or non-action from, from person, we will be in a, in a, in my opinion at least, we will be in a, in a, on the wrong path of things. Because when we are trying to, to we are not trying to change persons, we are trying to change their behavior, and we are trying to, to work with the system to make it easier to comply, and we will make it hard to, to not comply. So we are trying to work with the system rather than affecting individuals or persons. And I think this, this is a hard distinction, and, and it's still, I would say, it's, it's a struggle within the tax administration because this is a culture question. I still, as a role, as a prior auditor, it's still very easy to talk about taxpayers and businesses. But what I actually should be talking about is behavior, good or bad behavior, or, or um, rather than speaking of, of businesses and, and private persons. And, and we should focus more on, on things that businesses and people are doing rather than who they are and what they are. So that is one of the more important bases for, for all of this. Uh, and I could not, uh, could not uh, or I overheard in, in an earlier presentation, we were talking about taxpayer and taxpayer honesty. Uh, actually, what we are saying is, am I an honest person? I could be an honest person, but I still won't pay my tax. But I'm still an honest person. So we have to sort of separate between what we are and what we do. And that's one of the very important bases for, for all of our work. But in, in it, it's, uh, it's even more important when we are using advanced analytics and algorithms. Because it's, it's very easy. If we start to focus too much on the persons or the individuals or the businesses, we will tend to go astray, I think, in the way we think and the way we act. Because it would be very easy for us to... to um, to, to uh, build a good citizen model. And this is, actually, it's not that far-fetched. I heard, I think it was, maybe it was about two years ago, in, in uh, China, they have a good citizen model that is based on, on a number of indicators. All of these indicators are open to the public, they are open to citizens. So if I want to enhance my citizen score, it, I think it's a scale from, from zero up to 100 or something. And the more scores I get, the more benefits I will get. So if I choose to, to um, work together with Lotta, will that raise my score or decrease my score? Well, it depends on Lotta's score. But I can add my score by socializing with people or not socializing with other people. But is this what we want? Is, is, it, is it the persons we want to change? Is it, um, is it how we are perceived? Or, or do we want to add the benefits as, as they do in China? Probably not. So we have to keep in mind, if you draw the line, if we are talking about taxpayer and taxpayer honesty, where does the line go? Where does it end? Are we talking about behavior? Or are we talking about persons? And then where do we end this? Um, 
So what, what can we actually control? We can, of course, if we are using different methods within advanced analytics or, or statistics or, or research in, in general, they are more or less objective. And hence, the result is what it is, given a specific method that we are using. But what kind of parameters can be controlled using advanced analytics for risk management or other purposes? Well, we can talk about the first choice being what kind of applications do we want to use advanced analytics for? It may not be the best method for all applications. We have to ask ourselves, is this a good application of advanced analytics or not? being the first question. And the next choice would be what kind of information do we use in order to build these models in order to, to input to the model uh, or the different methods. And as I said that we have, we have the legal framework but that is only one part. And actually looking at the legal framework uh, we have one legislation that states that we are all equal to the law. Uh, it's it's a Swedish foundational uh, legislation. And we also have uh, legislation that states that we should not discriminate or the government should not discriminate people based on, on gender, color of the skin, ethnicity, nationality, language, religion, physical imperation, uh, sexual preference, etc. But if you actually look at the Swedish tax database law, we have one part there that says that we can actually use identification of a person. We can use citizenship. Is citizenship, is citizenship nationality, and, and ethnicity, is it the same thing or, or very similar? Could we derive one from another? Probably. So in this case, we have a legal framework that is contradictive, but we also have an, an, a little bit of an ethic question here. Even if we have the possibility to use something like citizenship, should we do it? Should we use that information? And that is, is the, the answer to the third question, that we need always to, to weigh what information do we want to, to put to the model, because the result... In the result, it will always, or, or it, in some cases, it will show that a specific group, a specific gender, has more or less uh, probability of, of being audited based on, on prior experience, based on prior uh, behavior, etc. But the result is something that is given due to the methods. But, we can, uh, but <laughs> what we can control is the information that we feed into the input to the model and the input to the work. And just to, to, to summarize a little bit, that as I was saying, ethics is, is not something that can be printed and handed down through the organization as, as a written instruction of what, what to do and what not to do. I think this is more or less a cultural question, and I think that the question of ethics should be more open and even more discussed within Swedish tax. I think that we are in some areas just beginning to have this sort of debate and discussion. And I would also like to invite <laughs> you and academia as well into that discussion and into that debate because this is not only the Swedish, my view or the Swedish tax view of what is ethically correct or not correct. We need to have society and academia on board in that discussion of what is correct and what is not correct, what is the right thing to do. And, and even if it's a struggle sometimes, <laughs> keeping track of the cultural and keeping track of the, the ethical question, I think <clears throat> we have a foundation that is the right of law, equal treatment, and transparency. If we can keep those three, I think we have a, a good foundation for a continuing discussion and a continuing debate on in this matter. Thank you.